This is not only a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it's a once in a once in a universe opportunity. Bitcoin values my time. You put the check in the bank and immediately your money starts to go down. Every person from an underserved community should understand how powerful Bitcoin is. And it changes the whole nature of the race thing. I signed up for a loan with what I had had in Bitcoin. Didn't ask me any questions about my race. Didn't ask me any questions about anything. It just said, okay, well, how much Bitcoin do you have? Well, we feel comfortable loaning you this against your Bitcoin at 3% interest unnecessary wars done and i have the options to do exactly what i want to do because bitcoin is going to do what it's going to do i can take out my money anytime i want to at whatever spot i need to because it is mine and that enables me to make better decisions with my life to be your own bank and to be a person of color is an incredible opportunity the thing that i want to first talk with you about is financial inclusion because mm -hmm. This is a topic that I don't talk so much about on, on my podcast. It's like Bitcoin does not discriminate anyone. Like Bitcoin right. is just like it's software. You can <laughs> download it, you, you, you right. can use it, uh, and it, it doesn't care who you are. That's But right. the fiat currencies cares who you are. Like if you go to the bank, like it, it asks all these questions. Uh, it asks you, where are you from? Who are your parents? Right. What is your, what is your income? Right. All those weird questions that, uh, nobody should care about, exactly. but the banking system cares about. Um, maybe let's, uh, start with your, your experience in the, in the fiat uh, world and how this Bitcoin got you better. And maybe also with your loan story. Okay. Um, well, that's actually the, a great question. In 2020, my mother was diagnosed with, uh, uh, advanced cancer. And I had already been, we'll, we'll go back to how I found Bitcoin, I guess, in a while, but I'd already found Bitcoin and um, I, I had some and I think it had run up to about 20,000 at that time. So at that time, you could get uh, the infrastructure, well, well, it really wasn't, but it was there to get, you know, to get loans at two, three, four percent interest. And I didn't know it. So I didn't want to sell off any assets and I didn't want to do anything crazy. So I just, okay, but I wanted to get my mother a PET scan because I needed to see how advanced the cancer was and what we'd have to spend, so on and so forth. And I did have Bitcoin. So um, I went to the bank and, you know, I, I've sold over a million units. I've done very well, but I'm in a, a very conservative town in Arizona. So I go into the bank and they kind of, you know, I get the look and I'm like, right, but I'm dressed up and I'm talking, we're talking. And finally, say, okay, you're approved for this amount of money. So that's okay. At this interest rate, that's okay. But then they kicked it up, of course, to the writer who looked at my royalties, looked at probably my Facebook page and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I said, ah, well, Mr. Beasley, we've determined that you're not, you're, you know, it's kind of risky, you know, your assets and it's kind of risky, your royalty game. And I said, oh, okay, I've been through this before. So I said, well, we'll give you the money, but we're going to give you, a, it has to be a high rate. You know how they do, just high, high rate. I said, okay, I've done this before and I know what this is. At the same time, I had learned that I could take, um, I had learned that basically Bitcoin was a house, was was an, not only an asset, but it was like, you know, something I could borrow against. And somebody, I'd learned it on, on the shows. So I, 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 I typed it in. I said, okay. And I told the bank, I said, okay, I'll come back in a couple of days. In the interim, I signed up for a loan with what I had had in Bitcoin. Didn't ask me any questions about my race. Didn't ask me any questions about anything. As, as to your point, it just said, okay, well, how much Bitcoin do you have? Well, we feel comfortable loaning you this against your Bitcoin at 3% interest. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I was able to do that in maybe maybe a day, not even a day, in, in a day. And I was able to take that, go and, and put my mother at the front of the list for a PET scan um, because, you know, cash is king when it comes to stuff like that. So I was able to do that. And we were able to determine that the cancer was far along, but still to know that I could borrow against, it was like a property. It is a property, really, a pristine property. And once I figured that out, I was like, you know, every person from an underserved community should understand how powerful Bitcoin is. And it changes the whole nature of the race thing. You know, you know to be your own bank and to be a person of color is an incredible opportunity. And I don't think many of us are really considering that at this time, to be able to, to, to not have to go to a bank and experience what I experienced. And I'm talking about somebody who, you know, I've sold a lot of records and I've done pretty well and they still had me go through these steps and jump through these hurdles that were unnecessary, where Bitcoin is just a great equalizer. You know, if you have some, it's going to be, it's, it's okay. You know, it doesn't ask you anything about anything. Like you said, where you're from, your, national, your nationality, your ethnicity, it's just property and it and just functions that way. So I'm grateful for that. And that's, that's an aspect that I really want to highlight again. It's like, 
for for any community or for any person uh, that is like oh like the the financial system is not treating me uh, well or it's like I'm in a bad position you have now the chance with Bitcoin. That's why I have people from Africa on a lot. I have people on from El Salvador a lot. Um, it's 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 the chance to be empowered with Bitcoin because all of a sudden this this thing, which is the best asset ever, yes. Yes. and it doesn't charge you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just there for you. Yes, I think it was on your show that I I, I heard somebody was from Africa and like overnight everything went up sixty percent. I was like, what? You know, and you think, think about if, if you know if you have Bitcoin, then you could okay, well, okay. But what if you don't? You know, what if it, you know if, if all of a sudden you wake up that that next morning and everything, you know, is up sixty percent, and you and you and 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 your and the value of whatever your local currency is, you know, just gets you know gutted. I'm like, man, what this? And then Bitcoin fixes all of that, and I was, and this, so that's why, especially to musicians of color and actually just music I, I talk about this all the time. I've actually been able to 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 not coach but to um talk to some musician friends who actually studied Berkeley College of Music who work in colleges and a couple of them actually put now they're putting uh instead of going to the four oh one K or four three B, they're putting half of that into Bitcoin and, and, and taking in you know and doing that for retirement and they're very, very, very happy with uh with the results. It's been maybe, you know, six, seven years. So, you know, with an asset that gives you, I just told you off camera that for the first time in my life, I, you know, I'm a pretty good musician and I've, and, and when you, what you put into music, music gives you back tenfold, you know, it just really, really, it's amazing. I had never found anything that did that except for Bitcoin. Now I've got something I can invest in and it's going to give me back more than what I put in. That's an amazing for me. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing, right? Uh, if if you do something good, uh, if you put uh, s somewhere value in where you got more value out, basically if you're a musician or something like that, uh, that's amazing. But if you put that financial energy that you got back into yeah. something bad in a weak asset, <laughs> then it it goes away again. Like you don't have anything from that. Yes, and, and you know, for me, it's time. You know, I'm 63. So I spent, you know, I love writing. I have a keyboard in front of me. You can't sit. Well, actually, maybe you can't. A keyboard in front of me. So I, I, I tour a lot. I, I'm in a hotel now, actually. Not, you know, my time is valuable. I, I love doing music and so on and so forth. Now I can, you know, I think about the fact that, you know, it's just, it, it's just, it, Bitcoin values my time, you know. So, and that's the thing. I, I, I just, it's just very, very cool for me because now I don't worry about, um, you know, the retirement, when I give up music in retirement, because I've done, you know, the algorithm takes over and big, if you do the four year thing, the four year thing, the four year thing, by the time I'm whatever I'm going to be, when I get rid of this, Bitcoin has already said, I'll take care of you. So that's what I like. I love about Bitcoin actually. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> this great, there's this great meme, like take care of your Bitcoin. Now they will take care of you at some point. And that, that's, that's a, that's a, really good thing like you have to take proper self custody that's don't, right don't, don't don't put them into something weird like uh, <laughs> uh like celsius fdx there are so many yeah. <laughs> cases where you lost your bitcoin along the way hey, uh, I, I got caught up in that uh not the actually but uh, um i did i borrowed against it twice i didn't need to borrow against it the second time i said let me do it again <laughs> And I got caught up in the, uh, can I say it on air or not, not, don't say it on air? Yeah, yeah. Send us, send us, oh, tell oh, it. I got caught up in the Celsius thing. And, um, oh man, I think, you know, it just, and what's interesting is that what I tell people now, excuse the siren, um, that I got caught up and I lost, you know, some stuff in Bitcoin, but I, we were still so early and we're early now, but I was so early that I could put what I had, you know, keep putting in the Bitcoin and now pretty much I'm right where I was a little bit ahead of the game when I lost all I lost, you know, the Celsius debacle. That's what I love about Bitcoin too. We're so early in the game. You know, now we have the ETFs coming in. We have, and, and I think that at this point too, you got a whole lot more people holding on to that Bitcoin. I know I'm one, you know, I'm just, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> I'm not doing anything with my Bitcoin. I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to set it and forget it. You know, so and that's that's the important thing for me is to know that I can relax, do my thing, value my time because Bitcoin values. Me. Is there a price um, which maybe like let's not not as a bull run coming uh, and maybe the price gets really high? Is there a price where you're like, ah, oh, let's let's take half of them off <laughs> or like, let's let's take some percent off and and do something with it? I don't know, pay for a house, pay for the kids or pay for anything. I was thinking about that actually this morning, 
And um, I'm sure that there might be, but maybe maybe 5%, maybe 10%, just something that would allow me to say, okay, look, you know, maybe, but I'm not even sure I want to do that because I don't need to. You know, um, in, in, in other words, I'm still working in my 60s. I'm touring and stuff like that, so the cash element is fine. But I really, I want, I wanted, to, I really want to set me up and really be comfortable once I start say, I'm done. I don't want to do any of this. And that's the thing that was interesting because when I was in school, when I was teaching at an institution, Berkeley College of Music, I, I quit early in my early 50s. And one day I went to the grocery store and I, I bought some eggs. And I said, wait a minute, these eggs are $2 more than they were last year. And I'm like, and then I started thinking globally. I'm like, what's going to happen like to the rest of this stuff? It's going to go up. My my income now is down. I need something to really, you know, shoot up, you know, my savings and stuff. And I've got nothing because I, I hate the stock market. You got to play it up. You got to play it down. And this, this I, I hate people who run companies because I have no access to those people. Not hate, but I don't like those companies because I have no access to the bosses. I have no access. I don't influence anything as relates to people who own stuff and all that kind of stuff. What I love about Bitcoin is there's no ownership. Bitcoin is Bitcoin. There's no boss. There's no, you know, a country doesn't own it, so on and so forth. And when I saw that, you know, that it was a hedge against inflation like no other, I was like, I finally found something that I can say, okay, this will help me. This will help, you know, my parents because my parents were, you know, I had to take care of them and I wanted to help their savings and, and, and stress them out. And that's exactly what I did. I used Bitcoin to do all of that. And I encourage anybody, you know, it, just research it yourself. But at the same time, when you think about the fact that you've worked all these years, you know, um, your savings, you know, to, to save this amount of money. And, and if you put one to five percent, 10 percent, whatever it is, you feel like it's a great allocation. You're going to really supercharge everything that you've saved for your whole life. And that's what I that's what I that's what I'm doing. And that's what I you know encourage other people to do. Investigate yourself and just figure it out. But. This this is not only a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it's a once in a, a once in a universe opportunity, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> once in a universe, uh, I I heard the, the best thing I heard till now was once in a species uh, yeah. opportunity. <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you also because uh, how old are you? Sixty or what you said? I'm sixty three. 63. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you don't look like 63, first of all. <laughs> well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, um, but but as, as someone that is 63, you, you probably think a lot about retirement. Uh, or do you just play till the end? Or, or you just like want to, because you found something that you love so much, you don't think about retirement? Or how do you view that with Bitcoin also? Well, the savings component r allows me to have options. You know, at first I was like, okay, well, this is what I had it all planned out, you know, because the time was the most important thing as we talked about before for me. What my time, but now with Bitcoin, if I do the four year cycles, I can factor out, okay, well, if I want to do this and I want to do that for the next four years, you know, I'll catch the next uh, bear market or whatever. And then by the time that plays itself out around the time I'm uh, 70, 71, 72, I'll be tired of this whole thing and I could just leave it alone. So that's what I'm looking at. But I have options. And before, when I left Berkeley, when I left the, the college and I had to take care of my parents financially, I didn't. I didn't have the I, I knew that I had to do X, Y and Z because of inflation, because this and that. But now that, you know, when I found Bitcoin, I was like, now I have the options to do exactly what I want to do, because Bitcoin is going to do what it's going to do. You know what I mean? So it's just that I can create, create, create. And like I said before, something is going to give me back more than I put into it, just like I'm doing with music. Amazing, and you, you are. Uh, we we didn't re we didn't even really introduce you. I'm not you, you about Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I we just directly jump into the Bitcoin conversation. Yeah. Um. You you are a musician. You sold some covers. Yeah, I sold a million uh, units. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how did this come together, and what are you doing exactly? Well, I'm, I, I was teaching. Actually, I'm a tour, and I've sold over a million units. I'm a, a smooth jazz or jazz musician. And I've done very pretty pretty well doing that. And I just I decided um, in my fifties that I didn't want to teach anymore. Um, I had done everything that I wanted to do in that institution, and I just wanted to walk away. And my house was paid for, uh, houses were paid for. I had some property, and I can and I just I didn't really feel like I wanted to do that anymore. But and I felt trapped. This was before Bitcoin, and then you know so when I left, everything was was tapped, everything was perfect. Then my parents got sick. And then I, I started to find out about how inflation works. And I started to, to you know, because my thing is that, like Wayne Gretzky says, I don't want to skate to where the puck is. I want to skate to where the puck is going to be. 
So when I thought about these financial components, all these things were lining up like, woo, you know, in five to 10 years, this, you know, this is going to be a problem for me and my parents, depending on how long they live. So it just, that's how God works, man. So as soon as I, I left and I, and I went to the store to get the eggs and I found out about inflation and I, I just, it just like, you know, I heard about the Bitcoin. I had been looking at it. And here's the thing that people of color and people from underserved, underserved communities don't get. The way they sold us the Bitcoin, they give us this big shiny gold coin. That's two thousand dollars, and they don't tell you that you can buy a little bit, a little portion of those two of that coin, and you're going to be okay. So the the way they were framing it, you know, is for people. Like, it just looked like a two thousand dollar stock that you had to buy all of to get in the game. That's what we all thought. You know, I, people still think that way, and it's not until you have conversations with people who are actually own Bitcoin that they'll you can, you can buy any you can buy. Five dollars worth of this thing, or ten dollars worth of this thing, and just watch it for a minute and let it, you know, let it do what it's going to do. But that said, that's when I found out that okay, look, you know, there's there's nothing better than this. This is like Michael Saylor says, it's like buying Manhattan, you know, when there's nothing but dirt. <laughs> and that's the way I got into it. And and um, you know, now I, I coach musicians. Look, if you can, if you're making, if they're giving you a two thousand dollar check every year. This year, your check is $2,000, but next year, that's going to be like 1800 The year after, maybe 1700 Then it goes down. The, your buying power decreases every time you don't do something to increase your buying power. Bitcoin is the hedge against that. You know, I tell people, all, especially musicians, I even used some of my Bitcoin early on to actually finance a record because I caught it coming up. I just took a piece of it and I did a record on it and turned it around. And, next, and that's, that's not a... a, a it's an asset. It's not a Bitcoin asset, but I turn it into another asset that, you know, pretty much will sell for the rest of my life. So that's how I use it as well. I may use it, you know, when it gets to a certain level to, to record an album against that way. I don't have to spend anything. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting uh, for me we, when we talk about things in there. Um, Satoshi rebranding is something interesting. Uh, many apps are already doing it. Like I see some Bitcoin exchanges, or DC, some other wallet apps that like give you the option not only look at the bitcoin amount but also look at the satoshi amount uh, which i absolutely love because it just feels so much better to have like a uh, hundred thousand satoshis than <laughs> to have like 0 0.001 yeah. uh, bitcoin like the, the, yeah. the feeling of it is better even though it does doesn't matter like it's just a decimal right. point it looks that bad. you move but <laughs> yeah. it's it definitely does something and i think we have to rebrand uh, to satoshis at some point especially if bitcoin now approaches 100k or 200k yeah. then people are like oh 200k that's so expensive i cannot buy that that's exactly right and, and i i just I, I would like i said before just it changed my life because I, once i started and you have to do the investigation when i when i when i got everything when i when i moved from boston to uh arizona I said I was going to investigate everything I could about Bitcoin because once I found out I could buy a piece of it, I wanted to see how I was going to hedge against the inflation. And I researched everything. I, I, I maybe spent 25 to 30 hours on my way, you know, driving to California, just researching everything I could, podcasts, interviews. I think Sailor was, had just come on the scene, like I said, had just come on the scene and some other people. So I really wanted to investigate. And I would encourage anybody to do the same thing because the, the fact of the matter is this, it's programmed to go up while the dollar's programmed to go down. So everybody really needs to think about, especially musicians, <laughs> you know. So if the value of my assets are going to, as, as albums and so on and so forth, what they tell you in the beginning as musicians, write as much as you can, own as much as you can, because the, treat your songs and your albums like real estate, because they're going to be, become more valuable with time. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. But you can actually count on that happening with Bitcoin. So by the time as I'm dealing with royalties now, and that is true because my royalties now are worth more now than they were, say, 20, 30 years ago. But coupled with Bitcoin, that's why I don't worry about my, my retirement, because at this point, uh, I love what I do and I'm going to do what I do until I can't do it anymore. And Bitcoin will be there to carry me through once, it's, with, once, it's, once I get through doing this. Uh, it's interesting. And then we can also come to the um, topic of like what Bitcoin can do for musicians. Uh, the one thing that I want to cover first, uh, it just comes to my mind. What does it actually, because for me, it's a hard time to grasp. I'm not a musician. I have no mm. clue how musicians make money, how, how this all this business in general works. What does it mean to to sell a, a million units? Is this like a million actual like physical <laughs> TV? Uh, CDs, CDs, or, CDs, or, or is it yeah, like yeah, Spotify? Yeah, I'm, I'm, or? yeah no, I'm, I'm talking about, yes, mu pieces of music, singles. 
uh, hardware, like, you know, CD, so on and so forth from back in the day. Um, and inclu- you can include some of those as well. That's one, it's just the number that I used to do. But the majority of the time when we're, um, you know, when we get paid and stuff, especially with the gigs, it's in cash, cash or checks and so on and so forth. And as soon as that hits the bank account, you know, uh, oh, and one thing, one thing that happened the other day, which really, really telling, I go, I went to the bank and I had done a deal and the guy flew out to Virginia to get paid in cash. So I go to the bank and I say, okay, um, you know, I, I think the, the transition was $15,000 or something, but they thought I said $50,000. Uh, so they said, Mr. Busy, we don't have that money here. I said, what do you mean you don't have $15,000 here? He said, no, we just don't carry that much cash. It's a bank. It's Wells Fargo Bank. What do you mean you don't have them? And they thought I said 50 rather than 15, but it, but a sign went off me and they said, you know, the money's not here. You know, whatever I put, you know, the, if they thought I said 50, what if I did have 50 and I wanted 50 out? It's still my 50. So I'm saying, no, 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 no. This whole bank thing. As as they, and this what this happened about maybe six months ago. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm doing the right thing because if this is, this, I, earn, I earned this. This is hardworking money that I earned. And I put it in the bank. And it, it, it just so happened it's 15 and not 50. But what if it was 50? There was emergency and I need it right away. I don't have access to it. This is this is one thing that um, my friends who don't get Bitcoin yet uh, don't get. Like they're like, "Oh, how can you sleep at night when you have like hundred percent in Bitcoin?" And I'm like, "Do you have over ten thousand euros in in the bank account?" I could not sleep before with ten thousand euros in the bank account. Like that, that would freak me out. <laughs> like I I always like I'm twenty five. Uh, I don't have, I don't have kids. I don't have like a company or anything. Like I, I just have to feed myself. So I'm pretty free. So I am really risk at worst. I keep my balance. Like I have the possibility to go like, I think to 15,000 in the minus. So I just keep my bank account at zero. Uh, and whenever the, there's money coming in, I buy the whole thing down to Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes like I'm in the minus, but I don't care. There's new money coming in back at zero. Like the, anytime I'm, close to to the plus or like uh, above zero i'm like <laughs> quick 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 <laughs> money quick 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 go to my big yes. account because i don't want it anywhere close to this fear system exactly uh, and i cannot i cannot understand how people can actually be feel safe in that fiat currency uh but a lot of people do like the it, it's it's hard for me to understand, but I also felt secure. Like I also was really like, oh, bank account. It's, it's, it's safe. It's, it's, That's right. it, it doesn't go anywhere. There's like this uh, security to 100 uh, K euros That's from right. the European national yeah. uh, from the bank. And so that it gives you a good feeling, but it's nothing worth. Like if, if they go under, it's, it's a way, but they will print more than the inflation is uh, pretty high. Right. And plus, the thing that you sign when you get the, the contract says, OK, you're, you're guaranteed to get your money up to a certain amount. I just told I just asked you for 15. You thought I said 50 and you told me that I can't get my 50 out. I just signed a contract with you that says I'm insured to 250,000. What am I not getting here? You know, one of my one of my assist, one of my associates said to me because he's you know, he said, Walter, I need you to diverse. I want, he's worried about he's a good guy. He said, I, want, I need you to diverse. And so on. So we don't want to put all your things, eggs in one basket. I said, you know what, man, that. That's that's a good thing, but let me ask you something. What do you think I can get that will give me year over year fifty to a hundred percent return? He said, "What do you mean?" I said, "That's what I'm getting, man, and that's what we all are getting in Bitcoin." You know, if you if you you know look at look at it the long side. He said, "Are you serious?" I said, "Yeah, man, that's what I'm trying to tell you." Is that the fact, man? Is if you put one to ten percent of your everything you've done in your whole life, and that you watch what how it supercharges your retirement. And, that, and and like you said, it, you know, it, it's hard for him to fathom. But I, I said, man, look, I'm living proof. And all, you, and I just sent him the charts. I said, look, study the charts. You know, see what happens. Look, you know, look at it. You know, and and you invest as you see, as you feel comfortable. And I'm very comfortable, as you just stated, that I'm in the best thing that probably I've ever seen in my lifetime, or will ever see in my lifetime, because of what it's doing for me right now, what it did for my parents when they were alive, and what it's going to do for me in the future. Absolutely. It's, it's so beautiful uh, when you see that and when you notice that, like it's, it's a sailor puts it always uh, so, so, so great when you're like, why would you go in a ship that's not as secure? Like you, you would go in there, like <laughs> you have seven ships and you would diversify your kids around all the seven ships, but they, they, they are not as secure as the one you, you put the whole family in the most secure ship and not in the, in the wooden ships. So it's, 
and so powerful once you get like, oh yeah, it's secure. It's the best form of asset. But how did you actually come to that? Like uh, as, as a musician, you you don't have a lot of financial <laughs> training probably. Right. How, how did you overcome that? Like, oh yeah, Bitcoin is the thing, especially also, I think the the older you get, the, the more adverse you are to technology yes. usually. Yeah. And was that a hurdle that you overcame? Um, as soon as I found out that it was, when I started doing the numbers and I started looking out like 10, 15 years and immediately when I, when it went from that, that first run from 3000 to 9,000, I believe it was 2017 and it went up and it came back down, but it, 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 it just, I'm not a, a major financial person, but when I saw the way it came back down and I saw that the foundation of it was increasing. And then when I looked back and I saw the foundation kept increasing, 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 I said, no, there's something different about this piece right here. This is different. I had been in Facebook um, IPO. I had been in, uh, I'd been Apple early, Amazon early. So I wasn't scared of this, you know, I mean, I'd seen it before and then I saw what the, what the, what the institutions became. And then when I started saying what, well, you know, this is no different than what I'm saying. Only this is got, you know, 21 million. I said, this is hard ass. And I taught my, just to, just to, to divert for a minute. I have two, 12, 14 year old great niece and nephew, right? So they, they're not, they don't live in my house anymore. But the, the thing that I'm most grateful for is I was able to teach them about inflation and teach them about Bitcoin before they left. Because now they understand that when they, when, when they're going to a store and they want to buy something or they want to save money, so on and so forth, they know that the value of that money is going to go down. Um, and the things that are going to buy are going to go up. So now they've got, and nobody taught me that. Like, as if you were, your question before, nobody taught me that until I was well into my forties or fifties. I mean, I didn't get it. So the technology component didn't really bother me that much as long as, as, as soon as I figured out, um, that, that I'm going to be okay in five to 10 years. My aunt told, taught me one thing when I bought my first house. I was, everybody in the family said, Oh, he's bought a little Walt's bought a house, a little Walt's bought a house. Congratulations, Walt. So and so forth. My aunt came to me and said, son, you didn't buy anything. The bank owns that house until you pay it off. I was like, oh, she's right. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been thinking about, well, is there anything that I can invest in that's going to be guaranteed to give me money over time for the long term? And then when I found Bitcoin, was it, was it, I, that was it. And then when I found I could borrow against it, when I started treating it like I was treating my retirement fund, when I started treating it like I, it was it was a house or a better house than I'd ever lived in in my life, and I, and I approached it that way, then that's when I started to see the best results. Just set it and forget it and let it do what it's going to do. And you live your life and invest in the things that you want to invest in and bring you joy and let Bitcoin do what it's going to do. And every check that I get now, I'm, you know, I, I, obviously I'm putting 30, 40% in because I, like you, you know, I'm, I don't have any kids or anything like that. I've taken care of my parents. I've done what I was supposed to do as a child, as a son. So now it's just basically let Bitcoin you know, uh, do what's going to do. And I'm going to make myself happy with music and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's just been an asset class. Well, it's just been something that's really enhanced my life uh, exponentially. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the BitBox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your BitBox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign 
individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. Yeah, and this is what money should do, right? You, you just, just get it and put it and you should forget it. You, you should not be forced. Like I told the story before on the podcast, I was, before I was in Bitcoin, I was like weird with stocks and I picked the stocks and I was actually really good in it. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of uh, people came to me like, Hey, I, I, what do you do with stocks? How do, how does this work? And I always try to explain what I do. Mm -hmm. And I always try to explain how I pick stocks, but they did not want to learn how to pick stocks. They actually wanted to learn how to secure their financial energy. But I didn't get that at the time. Uh, but now I get it. And that's what people want to do. Like, like a doctor want to save the, uh, they, they want to save lives during the day. And then they don't want to be a financial <laughs> well, yes. portfolio manager in the night. And, that's, and right. that's what Bitcoin is doing. You just like, Pick it and you put it, and then then it's uh, great. That you asked about the musicianship part of it. Let's just say I end up, or somebody ends up with, you know, maybe two thousand, three thousand dollars at the end of the night. Just like you just said, you know, you put as soon as you do all that work, spend all that time, you know, you know, playing and 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 just you're you're exhausted. You put the check in the bank, and immediately your money starts to go down. I mean, and I'm like, well, you know, and you do that over and over again, you know, um, and, and, and now with Bitcoin, I know if I put a, a, a small piece of everything that I do into Bitcoin, I don't have to worry about that check diminishing. That check in time will be more than that gig was worth on the night that I played it. That's all I care about. And it makes me smile, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, uh, I mean, we kind of talked, touched on it a little bit more, but maybe there is something more that, that you want to share with us. What can Bitcoin now do for musicians? What can Bitcoin now do for all those people who create content, create m music, create uh, something? Mm -hmm. And what can, what can Bitcoin do for them? The first thing is, um, you know, uh, the people said, well, you know, get a real job. You know, I mean, they tell the kids, don't ever become a musician. Don't ever become, get, get a real job because, you know, that's going to, that's not going to take you far. Well, it'll take you a lot further if you invest in Bitcoin along with what you make during the course of your career. You know what I mean? So you don't have to fear as you don't have to fear not having money at the end of the day. And that, that's the fear of many musicians. As I, when I came up, all my favorite musicians, not all, but many of them died broke. Um, because there wasn't a savings plan that they didn't know really, they weren't financially, you know, literate and stuff like that. But with Bitcoin, honestly, you know, you don't have to be financially literate, you know, to, 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 to understand how it works. Hey, I mean, it is, it is confusing if you get into the weeds and I don't get into the weeds. I just, the practical, the practicality of it just really moves me. So as a musician, I can understand the way it's going to operate, you know, based on algorithms and algorithms and so on and so forth. And I can be left just to practice the music and to play the music and to, and to get a certain amount of income. But if something is going to go up from, th let's just say we're at 68 now, I guess. No, no, we're at 62 or something like that today. Let's just say it just goes up 30, 40, 50%. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you factor that, when you, when you look at it the long way, no musician has ever really made that kind of money in percentages over the course of time. So if you put every check that you're in, you know, every if you put 20, 30 percent of that eradicates your fear of ending up broke as a musician in the next 10, 15, 20 years. You see what I'm saying? So basically it affects my music much better, much differently because now I don't have to worry about will this thing sell or not sell. I can just make the kind of music that I want to make, beautiful music, and if it's accepted, fine. But as long as I diligently put that money into let Bitcoin um, uh, let Bitcoin deal with the amount of time that I put into that beautiful 
piece or playing that performance or so on and so forth. I don't worry about the future. And that really helps my music. That's beautiful. I guess this enhances society at large. Like w once you like, that's on an individual level, well, what Bitcoin can do for musicians, Bitcoin do, can do basically for everyone. Um, but what if the Bitcoin is the standard? Like what, what if it's normal that our money goes up? First of all, I think people then have to get used to that their salary might go down. <laughs> that That's something that's right. that uh, people maybe uh, have a hard time wrapping their heads around because if you make 5% more uh, in the new year, but the inflation is 8%, your salary went down. Thank you. Uh, and in, in Bitcoin, that actually also might happen. Like your salary might go down because... but your salary might go down, but maybe you actually could buy more with the, the salary right. from last year. That, like that, there's a lot of interesting thought experiments uh, in there. Uh, what do you see happening? What, what, what do you imagine once we have a Bitcoin standard, once everyone like you and me have this, this like Bitcoin standard, this sound money, this fundamental this basis under our feet, uh, what could that do to society and to, to our human life? I just think, well, first and, for, uh, first and foremost, I think, you know, unnecessary wars, done. Done. Because now you've, you've eradicated the, the, the reason why many people, you know, are going to do this, that, this, that. People then will, fit, will, will feel so f powerful knowing that they don't need to chase this and they achieve it. The greed is pretty much gone because at the same time, I mean, you just, you're just equal with everybody. Bitcoin is the equalizer. You know what I mean? So that said, you know, you're not that part of the stress leaves your life. And as I said before, when it comes to creating just just musicianship, when it comes to being able to create without the fear of ending up broke, that is huge, man. I mean, you know, it, it, it allows the mind to go places in different places. That's why I try I try to preach this all the time. And I give I let people see exactly what I'm talking about, you know, percentages and so on and so forth. I just think as a society, you know, we end up individually as better people, because then we don't need to fear other human beings, you know? Um, and I, I know I'm sounding stupid, but at the same time, it's really true because a lot of this is, is born of, you know, inadequacy or inferiority complex or just, you know, just really crazy stuff that it, it, at least as a person of color, once I found out that I could be my own bank, that I don't need to be treated a certain way. If I had Bitcoin, I'm my own bank. I'm my own person. I can do what I want to, when I want to, I can take that Bitcoin. If I feel like leaving the United States and coming to Austria and, and turn it into something, whatever you guys, you know, units are there, I could go to El Salvador and live a, a very comfortable life using just, you know, just Bitcoin. When you actually had start having options, you know, especially as a person of color, you become much more, you become a much more creative human being. I think, no, it's not even about being a, a person of color. We all end up being much more creative, much more, I think, much nicer to each other because we understand that we have the power um, to not be afraid of other people uh, because of Bitcoin, in a sense. I, I don't know if that sounds, you know, crazy or not, but that's that's how I feel about it. Man, I take care, you know, I'm, I'm dieting better now. I'm taking care of my body better now because, you know, because I won't, I don't know, it's some kind of relationship with Bitcoin that I have. It makes me not want to eat the dumb food, <laughs> you know, like I said, because there's something out there that, like I said before, is giving me something for my time, is giving me something for, you know, my creation, is making everything better, you know, in my life. So I want to be around, I want to be around in life to experience more of it. And I think that's what it does, not only for musicians, but for people from all different backgrounds. All right, it's, it's really interesting. Where do you see Bitcoin's full potential? Do you feel that, or do you see that Bitcoin actually replaces all the fiat currencies will actually be the main store of value main main of exchange that would be great i don't know but i i that would be great I, I i don't know like i said before i don't i'm not a bitcoin expert but you know as i see as i look into the future i'm just so i'm happy as to what the options are with bitcoin i think i think they're going to have to adopt it because it's it, it's it begs to be adopted You know, people are going to come in here with the ETFs flowing, all this big money coming in here and stuff like that. And now as it gets more and more, I won't say expensive, but as it matures, now in the 60s, it goes, you know, the last dip we had, would it go down to maybe 50, 52, and it just crept back up ever so beautifully to 60, you know, and I'm like, yeah, that's my Bitcoin. <laughs> so it becomes much more 
uh, mature as an asset class, I guess, or a much more mature as a, as a as whatever it is. And people can start believing. Okay, now now what? Well, now what are you going to say now? You know, no, it didn't dip big dip, dip back to five thousand, and so on. maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it's programmed to do a lot better than than it's going to be doing now. So, I just think that for me, um, like I said before, I got in. And I did. I wasn't. I was scared. I was a little bit scared of it because it just. It was so different. You know, it was very, very different. But then Bitcoin, when it, when I started watching it do what it does on a day to day, week to week, month to month, even yet, it was two years. It just didn't do anything at around twenty thousand. And I wasn't worried because I had already had a relationship with Bitcoin, and it showed me its potential. You know, so I wasn't worried. I just that was the time when I put more money in because I knew and I was hoping that it stayed down a little bit longer, a little bit longer so I can actually invest in her more because she had invested in me prior to that, you know, little dip for the two years. Because I knew it was I knew it was going to come because it's, it's programmed to do what's going to do. So I just, I, you know, like I said before, it's just, um, you know, once once you're investing in it, once she starts giving you, I call her her, I call everything her, that actually gives a value. <laughs> so when she starts, you know, um taking care of you, I started, like I said before, uh, I become much more uh, content in the future. Give you a perfect example, though. Something you know, I, I gave my sisters, I think, about $1,000 worth of Bitcoin in 19. And the year afterwards, I, you know, they, they sold it, of course, because they were scared of it. And the year I checked it, the year afterward, it was worth, well, let me get this right, 2300 And now, and I, it, with Bitcoin to 54000 whatever it was, it was worth $14,000. An investment of one thousand dollars turned into fourteen thousand dollars, and I, I tried to tell him. I said, "See, this, if you had just left it there and just going about your, you didn't have it before. And before I gave it to you, just leave it there, so you could see what it's going to do." And once I tell people that story, and once people actually do their due diligence, there was a a, a, a lady who I gave four hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin to um, a couple of years ago, and it doubled, tripled, I, I believe, and she was totally, totally blown away because she had forgotten I'd given it to her. And now she's all in. So these are the stories that anecdotally, of course, you know, that 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 you know, get people interested in. And I think it's just it's just a miracle. And it could be a, a, a miracle for for the black community, the brown communities. Just so, you know, just just because we still have to deal with what we have to deal with as a people here, you know, and to be able to be your own bank and not to go into. I, I think that in the near future, not in the near future, but my niece and my nephew won't even probably be dealing with banks in the future. You know, and that's a good thing for me, you know, because I, I don't have good experiences with banks. <laughs> so and I, I see no doubt. I see no um, problems with dealing with Bitcoin as a as 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 a, you know, in everything that we do, you know, being able to pay. But I the quandary, only quandary that I have with it is that I don't want to spend it now at all. <laughs> Period. I just want to watch it. <laughs> But at some point, you you either have to spend it or take it to to your grave or give it to your. Yep, yep. And but you know what? Like you just said, those are options that I didn't have before Bitcoin. That's, that's amazing. Beauty. That's the beauty. Of it. Yeah, I love it a lot. Uh, what you're saying, and uh, I I loved it that uh, that I have you on because, um, like, I have a very wide range of of guests on. I see that. Usually, uh, usually like really hardcore Bitcoiner, but I. Love, like I had last week uh, a science teacher on. I saw that. Was never, was yeah. never on, on any other program. And it was wonderful to, to talk with him. Uh, and you now as a musician here. So it's like, I, I just want to create the, the space to let people outside of the usual ones yes. that are on every podcast yeah. uh, also speak. I mean, I also have them on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but yeah. I, I just want to have a, a really wide range of, of guests and, and opinions and perspectives on Bitcoin. And I think if we then come together and like de <laughs> create something of, of like directional from all those opinions, That's right. I think we get some interesting uh, directions. That's also something that I'm currently working on, like getting a, a an article or a book. I don't know where, where I go with that mm -hmm. on like, where is Bitcoin headed? What, what is yeah. Bitcoin doing for society from all those different opinions? I'm really, um, th those conversations outside of the usual Bitcoin group usually opens my mind. Like, oh, that that's what people actually want from Bitcoin. Like, yeah, uh, uh, Bitcoin are sometimes too deep into the topic. That's right. 
That's right. That, and that's what, when I, you know, when I saw it and I saw the diversity that you had going on in your channel, I was like, this is one of the free channels I've seen. There's so many people Bitcoin has touched, you know, um, and obviously you get into the weeds with it because you're, you're a pro, you know, pro, but I, when I, I saw some of the others, I was like, you know what, I'd, I'd like to, you know, it, 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 and, and help people who may not be thinking about this as, an, you know, for them. Because even just with, with the savings, man, just, I mean, you're talking about, you could spend, you, I spent hours trying to convince people and have convinced some that, look, you know, real estate is not going to get you this, you know, um, you know, the, the, the stocks and bonds are not going to get you this, man. I mean, I'm in, I'm in eight years now and that's not a long time, but it's long enough for me to, to let you know that, look, this has never happened to me before in my life. And I've been invested in some of the other stuff, but, but this is just a once in a lifetime opportunity. And had I known about this when I was still teaching, I would have put all my money that, you know, that I put into the stock market into Bitcoin when I found out what true nature was, but I have, was taking care of my parents at the time. And two, when you take care of your parents and you can use Bitcoin to actually help with that, which it helped me with at the time because I was able to use it as a house or borrow against that. And the interest rate was so low because, you know, the greed was out the picture. You know, and racism was out of the picture and so on so and so forth. I was able to get a, a really great interest rate, take care of my mother the best best of my ability and use Bitcoin to do it. And, you know, I, I, I can't say anything more about that. That's just that for a son to be able to do that and have the option to, to help take care of his parents with that and, and, and to get my father excited about the future. He didn't I mean, he passed two years later, but he was just so excited about Bitcoin when I was talking to him about it. Um, and, you know, something that we shared together, talking about Bitcoin. What did he do today? Well, he couldn't call it Bitcoin. He had Alzheimer's. But he, when he said, oh, how did he call it 25 cent? How did 25 cent do today? And I showed him the charts and said, well, we're up here, Pop. We're up there. You know, it's, it's come, came down a little bit today. He said, but you don't want to sell it? I said, no, Dad. Cause he, and then a week later, it would be up to 20,000. He said, man, that 25 cents. I don't know why he called it 25 cents. But it was just great being able to share that with him when he was alive, just to see something that new, that radical. He understood, even with Alzheimer's, that this was a once in a lifetime thing that was happening. And as a father and son, it was really nice to be able to share that. Wait, but you don't know why he called it 25 cents? No, he had Alzheimer's and he just, something happened with, he just started calling it 25 cents. <laughs> I don't know why. But every time he talked about 25 cents, I knew he was talking about Bitcoin. That's all. Probably because it's uh -huh. a coin or something like that. I don't know. But that's that's yeah. what he got triggered. You know, that's that's what triggered it. But it, that that was that was nice too to be able to share share something that I thought was so important to the future of our family and the future of of the family of the human family with him while he was alive. That was important. And you had a, a already a, a long life before Bitcoin. What did Bitcoin do to your spending behaviors and stuff like that? Did it actually man, change something? Man, let me tell you something. So I I, I did a deal. And the first thing that I wanted to do was just like buy something before, after Bitcoin, I'm like, okay, I, I don't need this. You know, let me put this into Bitcoin because whatever I'm buying here now is not, I'm not going to like it in four years, five years. I'm not going to like it in 10 years. Why am I going to spend this kind of money on something I'm really going to be out of love with in the next two or three, four or five years anyway? Let me put into something that's going to give me more value you know, the next 10 years. And then at that point in time, I have more options to do whatever I want to do with it. If I don't want to do anything with it, I still have that option. So it actually grew, I grew up <laughs> once I started investing in Bitcoin because I, I was incentivized to save rather than spend. And that's what it does. I think, well, to me, that's what it did. I don't know what it does to anybody else, but it really made me want to, to think differently about savings. Because if you think about it, you know, like I just said before, you know, you put your money in the bank, it's not necessarily going to be there if you need it, all of it at the same time. And that makes, that gives me anxiety or gave me anxiety before I started investing in Bitcoin. Because I know Saturday and Sunday, if I need something, I got Bitcoin. I can take, I can do whatever I need to do with it. Because people, like you just said, you know, they're, they're, you can buy things in it. Now. And I know my, I know where my money is and I know what it's doing. And I know I can take it out anytime I want to because it's the perfect money. And that's what what's what what you know I'm following really big because I can take out my money anytime I want to at whatever spot I need to because it is mine, <laughs> and that that enables me to make better decisions with my life. I think you know the, the the power of knowing that my savings account is in Bitcoin and Bitcoin is working for me twenty four seven. And the great thing is also 
all the Bitcoiners are working for you. Michael Saylor is working for you. I'm working for you. Everyone That's right. is, is, is working for you because they are saving in the same denominator. That's right. And how beautiful would that be if the whole world is, is, is working for each other? Because yeah. then we come to a point where, um, and that's, that's a big one. Uh, then we come to a point where we root for each other. That's right. Because if, if, if all of a sudden, someone builds a company who's really successful with it. He is doing it for Bitcoin. And then I'm profiting from that because he's doing something for humanity, which That's makes right. us more productive, more effective, more whatever, uh, depending on what he do does. And right now I see a lot of like, if there's a successful person, we envy them. We, That's right. we, we are putting negative things on them. That's right. But actually it should be the other way around. That's exactly right. They, they enhanced society they did something better like how, how much more value do we get because the apple iphone was uh, in, um um uh, innovated um how is the world created Great. <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> no i got you. Yeah. So, so so that's a that's a huge thing for for me we are like w what if we can all benefit from that and we don't have to pick and choose like stocks and try yeah. to get t time the market and, and try to like get some oh which real estate or what are the loan terms and all those weird things no we exactly, just buy bitcoin that, that's exactly right and, and the, like to your point before you know when it was down and somebody said well walter what do you think about it now it's down i, said, Man, I don't worry about bitcoin bitcoin is going to do what's supposed to do and you know it, it, it's the side it's, it's already done I, you know I, I you know i want to write this song because this song makes me feel good and i don't that's something I don't, worry, I don't worry about my finances anymore because i know this is going to make me a better man you know in the sense that you know i don't have because this is going the music is going to be better i'm going to be happier because i know i don't have to worry about my finances i just i'm just going to let it do what it's supposed to do and like you said before you know, if it if it's making people better, I have no problems with it at all. You know, because that's exactly the way it should be. And I, I had to watch musicians that I loved um, die. You know, from not having anything at the end of their lives because they invested, made bad investments, or just not even bad investments. I lived their money. You know, because you know, just that that's what happens. You know, but but to know now that if you probably put you know a percentage a small percentage of your savings in bitcoin it, it, that you don't really that you're not going to spend just let bitcoin do, do what it's supposed to do and you'll be very happy in five to ten years i think that's a real problem people standing at the end of their life with more lifetime yeah. than savings that's right all of the sudden uh, they have to be supported by their kids so that's they right. are putting a burden on their kids and then the kids I have to put some day a burn on that. Like that's a, it's a vi uh, virtuous cycle. So I'm glad, that's you a said, good thing. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because my father worked two jobs until he was probably around 70 or 75. Right. And I was wondering, I'm like, pop, why are you doing this? Why, you know, this is before Bitcoin. And I got it. Once I got into Bitcoin, I said, you know, he understands that he, he may outlive his money. And that's got him very nervous, very afraid, you know, when it comes to him as his, his wife. He, they're, certain to, they're used to a certain lifestyle. He's afraid that because of inflation that he's not going to be able to afford, afford the life. That's one of the reasons why I came out there, because he was probably was right. And when I came out there and then once we got into both of us, got, well, I got into Bitcoin. And I shared it with him and we did whatever. That's when the, the anxiety of that just dissipated because I knew that based upon what I was seeing, this was a once in a lifetime thing that was going to happen. And I knew my father would be okay. And I knew it. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's very really beautiful. Um, coming closer to the, or because it's already uh, close to one hour already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the time flew by. Yes, um, coming closer to, to the end routine. One question that I always ask my guests before the end routine, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Say again. What can, yeah, what can we learn from you besides the the topics that we already touched on? I'm evolving, and 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 I'm evolving in a way that prior to Bitcoin, I mean, I mean, we're still talking about Bitcoin that I wasn't, you know, th that was different. Um, there was more stress in my life. There was more. I was more afraid of a lot of things in my life before I actually started dealing with Bitcoin and people who and studying people who were, you know who could teach me about Bitcoin, to not have, to, to not be able to relax into a system that will enable you to be stronger, you know, in the next 10 or 15 years, 
you know, gave me a lot of anxiety. Get to, to uh, the, the the investment process that I was before. Afterwards, I think, and I don't know, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think I became nicer. I think I became more giving. I think I became, uh, yeah, less, less anxious because I knew there was something in my life now that if I did, like we just, I, I said it twice before, if I invested in it, it was going to take care of me, you know, the next five to 10 years. And I wouldn't have to worry about it. And I could share that with people. So it allowed me to be nice, a nicer human being and to think about others, you know, in a different kind of way. Even with the wars that are popping off now, it makes me even more sad than it probably would have been. Because, you know, when you think about it, it's always greed. It's always the, the lesser of, what, of who we are that we get involved in that kind of stuff. And if you think about what Bitcoin is designed to do, it takes all of that away. So that's, you know, and I hope I don't, I hope I'm not sounding weird, but that's just the way I feel. And uh, it's funny because music did that to me earlier on in life. And then you kind of get jaded after you know, it becomes a business or whatever. But then comes along Bitcoin and it does the same thing. And I'm just grateful for it. It's actually almost like religious type of thing, you know, for me. Um, so, uh, but that, you know, that that's the way I feel about it. Uh, and <clears throat> music has always been my life, but I study more about Bitcoin now than I do music. It's kind of interesting. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. It's it's really beautiful. Yeah. And I really appreciate the opportunity coming on, man. I really enjoy what you're doing. And I follow you and I support you. And I got did get your merch, like I said before. So just thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> but, but, but before we have the actual end routine from where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the question for you is, how would you apply, it's a very specific question, how would you apply the lightning split payments to make the world a better place? And I told you I am not an expert on Bitcoin, so you need to find another <laughs> question. <about that. laughs> but, but I think there is something really interesting for musicians in there, because when you think about uh, lightning payments and when you think about that split payments, like the, the ah. small instant payments, like yeah. uh, I, for example, I have Fountain. Uh, my podcast is on Fountain. So people streaming me sats for every minute they are watching my podcast, they are sending me Satoshis. So I get uh, from uh, people, uh, for, for example, they set their limits themselves. Like they said like, oh, per minute, I want to give Robin one sat or 10 sats or 20 sats. What? And I get sats from that. It's not a lot. Like it's in total, it's like, I think <clears throat> 20,000 or 30,000 Satoshis. Uh, now that in like the last one, two or three months uh, accumulated, yeah. but it's amazing. And this is something I think when... Uh, apps are going to develop, especially yeah. for, for everything, for like that could revolutionize Spotify or, or uh, the, the selling of, of music in general, where yeah. the <clears throat> artist just gets paid uh, as long as people watch, like, uh, or as long as people hear it. Uh, when the people hear it, five minutes long, the, 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 the song, then they get like for that, uh, I don't know, but a yeah, few stats for that. Yeah. And it's amazing. I think it could actually do a lot for artists and content creation in true. general. That's very true. I get it. Now I get what you're saying. Yeah, now that, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would, it's called Fountain? A Fountain, yes, yes. Uh, like my, my, my podcast is everywhere basically, but also on Fountain. Uh, and there you can basically, I, I will show you after the podcast Please. the app a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a really cool one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yo, that's, that would be revolutionary too. That would definitely help the music industry, especially independent musicians. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of uh, the payment network of fiat is also really bad, like and really yeah. inefficient. And uh, that's uh, a part that is not as discussed till now, where when Bitcoin, the payment network, especially with layer two, with the lightning network, mm -hmm. with other things that come on top of that, uh, this could actually enhance a lot of things and make it way more efficient. For example, um, I can, uh, on Fountain, I get money from streams and I can uh, make a split uh, automatically to someone else. Like for example, if I have an editor that yeah. edits all my podcasts, yeah. I can automatically split with him 10%. He gets 10%, I get the rest. And it gets directly within uh, uh, a few seconds where he streams it, uh, the one who, who listens, and then directly to him and to me, oh, yeah. and it's instant payment, uh, instant settlement. It's in Bitcoin. So like there, there are a lot of beautiful things in there 
that uh, are working really, really nicely. Yeah? So that, that that's, and then you, then also the people that um, listening to it, they see it. Oh, there's some editor that also gets 10%. Oh, I know oh, that's him. Yeah. Or there's like someone, yeah. it's, it's way more transparent and instant. And I, I think we don't even, and we don't even know, uh, can it, or I can imagine what Bitcoin actually can do for the world. Sure. That's very true. Yeah, I, I, I definitely need to investigate that. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then thank you uh, so much, uh, Walter, for being on and, and being part of the show. I appreciate that. Also, thank you for everyone uh, watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.